Uh, thank God for your life. Thank God for my life. It's a good day. And um, this is Toronto. The weather is so bright, even though it's a winter season. But um, we are coping. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you for another day. I want to thank you for your goodness and mercy upon us as a people. Blessed be your name, O God, in Jesus' name. Lord, as I come to your people to share your precious word, I pray that you will give me utterance, you will give me life, you give me joy, you give me peace, you give me clarity. I pray that this word will, Lord, help everyone that is listening and watching in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Yeah, you are wondering why is Pastor Dada coming again? Well, it's always coming because he loves the word of God. I tell you, I love the word of God. I, I, I have seen it all over. Everything on this earth is about the word of God. They were created by the word of God. The word of God brought it to pass. The word of God sustains it. The word of God makes it life. The word, and it is the word you hear that helps you. Where you are today is a function of the word you had yesterday. Where you will be tomorrow is a function of the word you hear today and yesterday. I'm hoping and praying that this word will help you this afternoon or whatever time it is in your geographical location in the name of Jesus. You see, what is the word that is on your heart this afternoon, Pastor? That it is uh, something very prevalent, something very common, but I feel that I want to put it in a perspective, in a way that you can actually be blessed by it. We talk about the blood of Jesus. We talk about the way, the reason why Jesus came and so on and so forth. But I perceive in my spirit that um, some people just don't know the significance, how powerful, how important the word of God is. So I want to talk a little bit and give you six reasons for the blood of Jesus, for Jesus shedding his blood. The first thing is that the Bible says uh, when Jesus was born and came, John introduced him. And how did they introduce him? Let's look at the Bible. He said, Behold, <laughs> the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. Wow. John 1 uh, 29 to 30. He said, Jesus existed before. You know, chronologically, if you read uh, Luke chapter 1, you find that before Jesus was born, the same angel, Gabriel, that came to Zachariah came six months earlier. As a matter of fact, by the time he now came to Mary, he said, Your cousin, Elizabeth, that was regarded as what? Barren is now conceived, meaning that when John came on earth, he was a senior. He was older than Jesus, physically on earth. But when John introduced him, he said, Behold, he that has come to take away the sin of man, the Lamb, who existed before me. Hallelujah. So, where we are going is the purpose for which he came. He came as the Lamb. Simple, gentle, non-aggressive, willing to do everything to make sure, you know, that he accomplishes that purpose. And what is that purpose? To take the sins of man away. You know, I don't want to go to too much theology this time, but the reason is that sin has to be cured. How is sin cured? By shedding the blood. And in the Old Testament, it was the blood of the what? Of the Lamb. And it is not the man that is examined. It is the blood of the... Uh, it is the Lamb that is examined. So, this is a perfect Lamb. Jesus is a perfect Lamb. And that's why I believe John introduced him as the Lamb that taketh away the sin. He didn't say the man that taketh away. It didn't say the God that taketh away. In truth, because in the Old Testament, it is the lamb that will be brought to the high priest. The high priest will not examine you, the sinner. He will examine the lamb, the ransom. And that leads me to the first thing 
that the blood has come to do. The blood has come to do what? First of all, we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. We are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. First Peter 1, 18 to 19. I want to read that very quickly. First Peter 1, 18 to 19. First Peter 1, 18 to 19. Oh, we don't like that, but sorry about that. Yeah, First Peter 1, 18 to 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. To redeem means to buy back. Jesus paid the penalty for our sins with his death so he could purchase us from our captivity to sin and death and return us back to god as his eternal possession hallelujah praise the lord my brother as many as have given their lives to christ for the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten said that whosoever believes in him will not perish Everyone that has given his life, their lives have been bought back from death. He said the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. The purpose for which Christ came is to redeem your life. I need you to celebrate that. You need to rejoice in that. You and I will have languished and perished in eternal hell for eternity. But Jesus paid a price. He shed his precious blood. The Bible calls the precious. Why was it precious? Because it's the blood of the Son of God. The precious Son of God. Number two, listen why the blood is significant. The essence of the blood is that we are justified by his blood and reconciled with God. We were alienated. When Adam came and Eve, you, you know the story, they, they, we left paradise. We were no more in good terms with God. In fact, the Bible says God will come in the evening and, you know, fellowship with man and we'll be there and uh, Adam, oh, have you eaten this? Have you eaten this? And so, Daddy, you know, that was the kind of rapport. But the moment Adam ate that, what happened? The Bible says he hid himself. And when God came, <laughs> can you really hide from God? <laughs> it's what as it says, even it says, even when I'm in the darkest place in the earth, he said, You do are there. But God was, you know, <laughs> asking Adam, Where are you? And he thought he, God didn't see him. Wow. And that's another lesson for another day. God sees you, God knows where you are. What you are doing in the open, in the closet, wherever you are, it's not only your public life that is available to God. You know, there is a, a story of a, a man that has four sons, and one of them, uh, one day, and he's always stealing, and he's always taking these boys to steal. And one day, he told one, you know, you stay in the, that west, you, take, you stay in the east, you stay in the north, you stay in the south. And when you see the owner coming, do what? Shout, you know, so that we, <laughs> he could run back. And one of the sons said, Daddy, who is uh, looking upstairs? You know, praise the Lord. I think that was the end of that stealing exp uh, expedite for that man. He stopped it because he realized that somebody is watching. What am I saying? You can't hide from God. And so... When we were separated, there was a need for us to be reconciled. And so God reconciled us to his blood. Look at uh, Romans chapter 5, because we want to uh, have a, a, a reference from that in the Bible. The Bible said they were always searching the scripture to see whether things are so. Romans chapter 5 from verse 9, uh, verses 9 and 10. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were 
enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Hallelujah. We shall be saved. In another passage, first, uh, second Corinthians chapter 5, he said, he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are not just reconciled, we are given the ministry of what reconciliation. Justification means we are declared no longer guilty. No longer guilty. No matter what the sin you have committed, when you are forgiven, you are forgiven. There is no archive. There is no data bank for your sin anymore. Because Jesus paid that penalty in full by dying in one place. And even further, we are declared righteous. It's not just that you are forgiven. It's not just that you are reconciled. You are now declared righteous. And that's an amazing transaction, you know. Which occurred on the cross. All our sins were placed upon him. It is called impution. He imputed the sin upon him. He transferred it. Hallelujah. And all his righteousnesses were credited to our account. Second Corinthians 5 verse 21. Mm -hmm. Now we are reconciled to the Father by being brought back to a right relationship. What is the essence of that reconciliation? You can talk to him. He's your father. He's my father. I can talk to him. When there is quarrel between husband and wife, they can't communicate. When there is quarrel between children and parents, you, the communication cannot flow. But now that you are reconciled to God, you can flow. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You can enjoy the blessings of God, the power of God. You can ask God. You can, you know, jump or sit on his lap, ask him. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, uh, yes, and 8, he said, Ask and shall receive, seek and shall find, knock and shall be opened unto you. How can we do that? Because we are reconciled. What's the third reason? The third reason for which Jesus, you know, shed his blood and the significance of the blood. It sanctifies us. Jesus sanctifies us through the blood. Sanctifies us through the blood. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse um, 12. Yeah, verse 12. Verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. With his own blood. Sanctification means we are set apart for the Lord and progressively made more righteous, holy. Hallelujah. Our redemption, our justification, and reconciliation happen in a moment at our salvation. But sanctification is an event that begins at the same time and continues throughout our lives. We continue to keep ourselves sanctified. We continue to keep ourselves from anything that can pollute us, anything that can mess us up. Hallelujah. Look at Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Verses 20, uh, yes, Philippians 3 20 and um, 21. It says, Children, obey your parents. No, no, sorry, I'm reading the wrong. That's uh, Colossians. Ephesians 3 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also. We look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto us. You see, sanctification is, is, is what people are looking for inside of you. When you say you are a Christian, people want to see the evidence of sanctification, the evidence of holiness. You can't talk anyhow. You can't behave anyhow. You are separated. Particularly if you find yourself now as a minister of God. You can't, you can't just relate anyhow. You must show the evidence of sanctification. Evidence of purity. Evidence of saying, look, I'm not part of sin. I'm not part of evil. I'm not part of lifestyle that does not glorify God anymore. Glory be to God. Number four, number four, I'm talking about the essence and the significance of the blood of Jesus. 
the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us from sin. Friend, you can be can we be real? God does not expect us when we have given our life to Christ to continue to sin. But the truth remains that we do fall into sin. Christians can fall into sin. Christians that are redeemed, that are born again, cannot live in sin. If for any reason, Pastor Dada, for one reason, I pray it doesn't happen, tell a lie or told a lie. Does that mean that God will now throw me to hellfire? God will not throw me to hellfire if I do what is necessary. And what is necessary? I repent. I say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's not me. In Romans chapter 7, Paul said, the things I want to do, they are the things I do. The things I want to do, I, there are things you do what you don't want to do. Let's be frank with ourselves. There are things, times we just mess up. But God didn't say because you mess up, you are no more my child. My death on you is now in vain. All that you have done for me is nothing. Because we have children. I have children by the grace of God. If they misbehave, I correct them. I tell them, ask for forgiveness. You know, I, I, I learned that from my teacher. Mr. Folaya in, uh, in uh, Christ Apostolic Ch Church in uh, uh, drama school where for, like, many, many years ago. I remember this teacher when we, we have made noise, they have written our names. I don't know if you remember those things. They are always captain in the class who comes with the name of those of us who are noisy, you know, and uh, we want to argue our case. And this man will just say, All I need from you. It's one word. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. And that's what God's uh, uh, system uh, is. Look at First John one seven to nine. First John one seven to nine. You know, First John one seven to nine. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we are fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just if we forget, if we confess our sins. Have you committed the sin and you are allowing that to weigh you down? To throw you off guard? Is that what is leading you to depression? Are you hiding that? No. All you need to do is do what? Confess that sin. As a matter of fact, there is another scripture I want to read. Proverbs 28. I like that one also. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Yes. It says... He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but also confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. The blood of Jesus is there for a continuous cleansing, for a continuous cleansing. How does that operate? You know, some people, they say they are in grace now because they are in grace. They don't need to confess their sin. I think you are wrong. You are wrong. I'm very sincere about that one. He said, our adventure, we say, look at that uh, 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 John chapter, first John chapter 2, you know. He said, my little children, verse 1, these things write out to you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have an advocate. I'm not talking about the advocacy of Christ. I'm talking about the blood. It's true, it can make plea for you, but the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. It's, it's done on the cross once and for all, but we have the, 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 the continuity, we maintain the continuity. If you use a plate and it's dirty, what do you do? You wash it. Do you say because you are washing before and it's dirty, you continue to pile it up? You will suffer from bacteria and viruses and so on. That's it. 
the blood of Jesus, number four, continuously cleanses us from our sins. Number five, Christ's blood has given us access to God. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus gives us what? Access to God. I mentioned that briefly, but uh, let's read this relevant scripture. Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 10. Glory be to God. I hope uh, somebody's been blessed this afternoon. Praise God Almighty. Yes, Hebrew chapter 10, 19 to 20. 19 to 22. Hebrew chapter 10, 19 to 22, yes. By a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, and is to say is sin. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We have access. We have access. We have access in the Old Testament. Only the high priest could enter into the most holy place in the temple and once in a year with animal blood as an offering. But when Jesus came and offered the only perfect and complete sacrifice, his own blood, the veil of the temple in Jerusalem that separated God from the people was torn, you know, from top down. Because of Christ's death for our sins, we can now approach our Heavenly Father at any time, directly and confidently with our prayer, our petition, and our praises. Hallelujah. I say that one. Our prayer, our petition, our praises. My friend, the blood of Jesus gives us access. The last but not the least, I want to say, which is all that we, 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 we talk about most in addition uh, uh, redemption and this one is the blood of Jesus protects us protects us protects us hallelujah look at um, we take uh, the, the, the prototype from um, Exodus Exodus chapter 12 verse 23 for the, let's read it from verse 21 then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and unto them, draw out and take you a lamb, according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the blood two side post with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of this house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side poles, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. Glory be to God. I started by letting you know that instead of the lamb that was being used for sacrifices in the Old Testament, uh, as many times as people commit sin, now the blood of Jesus was shed once and for all. Amen. And just in the same way, we see that when the people were delivered, he said they should take the blood of the lamb that was blameless, just like the blood of Jesus, and put it upon the doorpost and upon the lintels. That when the angel of destruction is passing by, he will pass over you. That night... There was the angel of death that killed all the firstborn, including that son of the of Pharaoh, and all the firstborn of beasts and human beings. Let me let you know, the angel of death, the angel of sickness, the angel of disease, the angel of divorce, the angel of evil is still passing. But when you apply the blood, hallelujah, when you put the blood of Jesus over you, you are secured. I am telling you from experience. I am secured. The blood of Jesus preserves your life. All you need to do is to plead the blood. Just as when you sin, you ask God for forgiveness. I plead the blood. 
the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. This week, let me share a testimony. One of our young daughters in the church just came to me, you know, run. She lives across uh, in the same street with us in Toronto here. And came and said, look, Daddy, I, I, saw, I saw something in my room. What is it that you saw? I said, a thick black animal. She was sick. The doors were closed. She saw this thick black animal. And she was, of course, a young lady, G3, uh, really concerned. And uh, I prayed with her. And I pleaded the blood. And I said, you are covered with the blood. I prayed into anointing oil. I said, anoint the house. There is protection over you. God didn't just put us here for the devil to come and be slapping us anyhow. For the devil to just come into our life and do what? No, 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 no. And in the following day, or this, two days after, they saw that animal dead. Dead. And I mean dead. The blood of Jesus protects us. The blood of Jesus makes the difference. I want to repeat again for the purpose of clarity. Number one, the blood of Jesus does what? Redeems us. Redeems us. I want to read the scripture. I, I didn't read uh, initially. Uh, Colossians, yes, Colossians 1, verse 14. I love that scripture very much. And uh, I just want to leave it as part of this small teaching this afternoon 14 it says, for in whom we have redemption to his blood even the forgiveness of sin in whom we have redemption so the blood of Jesus brings redemption number two the blood of Jesus reconciles us number three the blood of Jesus sanctifies us number four the blood of Jesus uh, cleanses us from sin number five the blood of Jesus gives us access to God and number six the blood of Jesus protects us. Thank you for listening. Father, I thank you for the word of God, for your people this afternoon. I pray that the word of God will heal. We set the people free. We make a difference. We, if anybody is watching and has not given his or her life, I pray that they will embrace the redemptive power in the blood of Jesus. If anybody is here, Lord Jesus Christ, and is alienated, cannot communicate, cannot move closer to you, I pray that they will see that the partition, the wall of partition has been destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, whatever is making us not to separate ourselves, sanctify ourselves, that we will embrace what you have done through the blood of Jesus and Lord walk in the sanctification power of the blood Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord as we confess our sins we continuously be cleansed we will not live in sin but when we fall into sin we will not remain in sin and we come out of it we confess and you continue to move us forward. I pray that Lord we will not abuse the, the because the Bible says a, a Paul in, in Galatians chapter 2 says I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the life that I live now, I live through the Son of God who died for me. And in verse 3, it I do not frustrate the, 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 the grace of God. I pray that we will not frustrate your grace, we will not frustrate your blood in the name of the Lord. And finally, Lord, I pray, O oh God, for your people, protection. Protection from accident protection from evil, protection from death, protection from uh, hypertension, from sicknesses, from diseases in the name of the Lord. May the Lord grant you long life. He said, with long life will I satisfy you and grant you my salvation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. I love God. I love you. And I know God loves you more than myself. If you are within the uh, greater Toronto area, my name is Pastor that I'm the senior pastor of Christ Apostolic Church Better and also the district superintendent in this community for CAC uh, worldwide. And uh, we invite you to 94 Kenhard Drive, uh, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, yeah, the major intersection is uh, Western Road and Finch Avenue.
every Sunday, 10 a.m. we are there. Every Friday we are also there by the grace of God from 10 p.m. And on Wednesdays we are there also. And we are starting something fresh this month. Something from next week. You need to meet part of that one. Hour of Deliverance. Every Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. It's going to be interdenominational. Make sure you are there and you, God will bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Peace.